The Pan-European Picnic, German, Pan Picnic, Hungarian, Pan Picnic was a peace demonstration held on the Austrian-Hungarian border near Sopron, Hungary on 19 August 1989, the day before the Hungarian holiday commemorating Stephen I of Hungary. Part of the revolutions of 1989 leading to the lifting of the Iron Curtain and the reunification of Germany, it was organized by the Pan-European Union and the opposition Hungarian Democratic Forum under the sponsorship of Archduke Otto von Habsburg and Imre Topic: Background <inaudible> 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 In 1989, the situation in Central Europe was tense. Despite dictatorial governments, the people in Eastern Bloc countries demanded democratic elections, freedom of speech, and the withdrawal of Soviet troops. The Iron Curtain and its physical manifestations in heavily guarded border fences and crossings, e.g. as seen in Czechoslovakia and East Germany, were a dominant factor in the movement to unite Europe. Although some countries, such as East Germany, had a hard-line communist power structure, others, such as Hungary, took a reform-oriented approach. Supported by Mikhail Gorbachev's new policies, the reformist communist country's leadership accepted the necessity for change. Non-governmental organizations and new political parties played a sizable role in the movement towards a democratic, multi-party system. That year, round-table discussions were held in several Central European countries to develop a consensus on changing the political system. In February formal discussions began in Warsaw and on 4 April the Polish Round Table Agreement was signed, legalizing solidarity and scheduling parliamentary elections for 4 June. Solidarity's victory surpassed all expectations. <laughs> <laughs> Developments in Hungary Beginning in 1989, Romanian citizens were filling refugee camps at the Hungarian Romanian border near Debrecen. In the early summer of 1989, 30 to 40,000 people sought asylum in Hungary. Although the Hungarian government had been bound by a bilateral agreement to return the refugees to Romania, Hungary signed the United Nations Convention relating to the status of refugees (CRSR) in 1989. The financial situation was difficult in Hungary, and Prime Minister Miklos Németh decided that his government could not afford to maintain automated border control along the border with Austria. Spare parts would come from the west and were paid for in hard currency. Namit believed it was no longer necessary to secure the borders, Hungarians were allowed to travel freely, and the government did not intend to continue fortifying the country's western borders. At the border between East and West Berlin several hundred people were killed, with border guards ordered to shoot escapees. The last person shot to death was Chris Guefroy, in February 1989. East Germans, who often spent their summer holidays on Lake Balaton where they could meet relatives and friends from West Germany, remained in Hungary during the summer of 1989. On 20 June Otto von Habsburg, heir apparent of the House of Habsburg and member of the European Parliament from 1979 to 1999, addressed an audience at the University in Debrecen about Europe without borders and the European Parliament election's impact on Central Europe. His speech was followed by a dinner, at which two representatives of the conservative Hungarian Democratic Forum Party Maria Filp and Ferenc Mesaris suggested a picnic for local residents at the Austro-Hungarian border to celebrate the bonds between Austrians and Hungarians. Although the Hungarian Democratic Forum's MDF national leadership of the MDF had reservations, Filp, supported by local Fidesz and MDF groups, recruited participants and searched for a suitable location. She wanted to include guests at the Common Destiny Camp, a gathering of intellectuals and opposition activists from Central and Eastern European countries in Martinvassar, not far from Lake Baladin, scheduled to end date on the 20th of August. The site chosen for the picnic was on Bratislava Road in Sopron, a border crossing since 1922. The gathering was intended as an informal meeting of Austrians and Hungarians at the border meadow. Permission to open the border station for three hours was granted, so pedestrians from both countries could experience Europe without borders. Its organizers recruited Otto von Habsburg and Imre Posge, a reformist member of the Hungarian Socialist Workers' Party MSZMP and Minister of State, as patrons of the event. Former Prime Minister Namit explained in 1989, a 2014 documentary, that the picnic offered the Hungarian government a way out of a situation which had arisen with East German tourists holidaying in Hungary that summer. 
No one of us forecast it that during the summer of 1989 we will have another hot potato in our hands, namely the German refugee problem. I got the first news that, interestingly, after the two to three weeks long holiday, some of the GDR citizens decided to stay, and it was clear to me, that this is now very, very serious. In Budapest, around the Lake Baladin, all the camping sites were fully, fully packed, even along the road, without any facilities around them, of course. End of September, and the cold weather arrives, we did not have facilities to provide, these people will die here, frozen, during the winter. So, why didn't I just send them home? For years we were obliged to pick up East Germans and send them home on special airplanes, organized by the infamous Stasi, to take them home, in many cases to prison or serious harassment. We couldn't keep doing that, certainly not with 100,000 people. We had to find a clear solution. We could not keep them here, and we could not send them back. The only remaining option was the unthinkable, to somehow send them to the West, but this was bound to provoke not only Honecker and his regime in East Germany, but also the hard-liners in Moscow, so what to do, what to do? A flyer was produced, advertising the picnic with a map of the site, and was distributed to East German citizens wishing to defect to West Germany via Austria. Under East German law, citizens were required to request permission to travel to the West, they saw the picnic as an opportunity to act. The destiny of these approximately 100,000 people was the top news story in primetime news broadcasts for several months, showing Europe the urgent need to find a suitable way out. The East German rulers, planning to celebrate the 40th birthday of East Germany on 7 October 1989, were keen to hide the problems and were silent about the mass exodus of their own people. In a re-enacted scene in Anders Ostergaard's documentary 1989, Prime Minister Namit tells an aide, Gyuri, I think this could actually be a very good thing. I think it would be good if some of the East Germans used this opportunity and fled. Fled? Yes. And we would not interfere with it. I see. Namit explained in the documentary, this was really a great opportunity to us to assess the Russians' reactions, to test the tolerance of the Soviet Union. So we sent out an order to the border troops, please instruct your guards, if you see any East Germans on the border, let them pass. Do not intervene. At the picnic several hundred East German citizens overran the old wooden gate, reaching Austria unhindered by the border guards around Arpad Bella. The Hungarian borders were opened on the 11th of September, and the Berlin Wall fell on the 9th of November. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Picnic events. In a symbolic gesture agreed to by Austria and Hungary, a border gate on the road from Sankt Margareth and Imbergenland, Austria to Sopronkoita, Hungary was to be opened for three hours on the 19th of August. On 27 June Austrian Foreign Minister Alois Mach and his Hungarian counterpart, Gyula Horn, cut the border fence about 6 miles) from this spot a symbolic act highlighting Hungary's decision to dismantle its border surveillance, which had begun on 2 May. More than 600 East Germans fled to the west. In the run-up to the picnic, its organizers distributed pamphlets advertising the event and Hungarian border guards were ordered by the Ministry of the Interior not to intervene or carry arms, the border guards helped people to flee. In Budapest and around Lake Baladin, thousands of East Germans hesitated to cross the border. Over the next few days, the Hungarian government increased the number of guards patrolling its western border and a relatively small number of refugees reached the west. On the 11th of September 1989, Hungary opened its borders to citizens of East Germany and other Central European countries. This was the first time a Central European border was opened to citizens of Eastern Bloc states. A few months after the opening, more than 70,000 East Germans fled to West Germany via Hungary. Prime Minister Nemet said in 1989, "I was in my office all day. I was nervous, very nervous." Luckily, there was no knocking on my door by the Soviet ambassador, no telephone calls from Moscow. The picnic was organized by four Hungarian opposition parties, the Hungarian Democratic Forum, the Alliance of Free Democrats, Fidesz, and the Independent Smallholders, Agrarian Workers and Civic Party. Its patrons were Christian Social Union in Bavaria Mep Otto von Habsburg head of the House of Habsburg and claimant of the Austro-Hungarian throne and Hungarian Minister of State and reformer Imre Posge. East Germany's Erich Honecker told the Daily Mirror about the picnic. 
Habsburg distributed pamphlets right up to the Polish border, inviting East German holiday makers to a picnic. When they came to the picnic, they were given presents, food, and Deutsche Marks, before being persuaded to go over to the West. Later developments The Hungarian government normalized border controls after the picnic. In August, 6,923 people were arrested at the border, of those, 5,527 or 80% were East Germans. The Hungarian government feared that laxness would lead to hardliners assuming control in the Kremlin, leading to a coup d'état against Gorbachev. During the night of 21-22 August Kurt Werner Schultz, a 36-year-old East German from Weimar, was killed. Namit said later, We decided to get back to the rule books on the border control, but at the same time, we, or I, created a trap for myself. One of the advisors quite clearly told me, Look, this is a very risky business now, Miklos, do you know what this means? It means that from now on every single murder will be your fault. Do you understand? I felt ashamed that it had happened. I made the conclusion in one sentence. We are opening up. On the 22nd of August Namit flew by helicopter to Bonn to meet with West German Chancellor Helmut Kohl and Kohl's Foreign Secretary, Hans Dietrich Genscher. There, Namit. Dropped a bomb on their table. Esteemed Chancellor, an important decision has been made in Budapest. Returning the refugees to East Germany is out of the question. We shall open the border, and by mid-September, all East Germans should be able to leave our country. I will never forget his eyes. Kohl, the big boy, was moved to tears. Namit assured Kohl that the Hungarians would handle the border situation, and compliance by Gorbachev was unnecessary. Kohl telephoned Gorbachev, informing him of Namit's decision, and Gorbachev assured Kohl that the Hungarian premier was a good man. On the 11th of September the border was opened, and 30,000 East Germans fled to the west. After the East German regime tried to block the Hungarian route, thousands fled to the west via Czechoslovakia and there was a massive popular uprising. On 17 October Honecker was relieved as head of state, and on 9 November the gates to West Berlin were opened. Topic. Today The picnic site is commemorated with a monument by Miklos Moloko, a bell from the city of Debrecen, a pagoda from the Association of Japanese-Hungarian Friendship, and a wooden monument unveiled by the organizers in 1991. A large artwork of a cross and barbed wire by Gabriela von Habsburg, daughter of Otto von Habsburg is at the Cave Theater in Ferterakos, a few kilometers from the site. The Pan-European picnic is considered a significant milestone on the road to German reunification, and commemorative ceremonies are held annually on 19 August at the border. In 2009 Angela Merkel who grew up in East Germany attended festivities commemorating the picnic's 20th anniversary, thanking the Hungarians for their courage and foresight. Two enslaved nations together broke down the walls of enslavement and Hungarians gave wings to East Germans' desire for freedom. Hungarian President Laszlo Solyam unveiled a white marble monument in memory of those who risked their lives to cross the Iron Curtain, and Swedish Foreign Minister Karl Bildt said, We must remain an open Europe of open societies and open minds, open to others beyond our present boundaries. See also Austria-Hungary relations Removal of Hungary's border fence with Austria Revolutions of 1989 References External links Das Paneuropa Picnic VOM 19. August 1989, Das Ende der Teilung Europas. In German. Paneuropai Unio. Retrieved 10 August 2009. Longer article on the Pan-European Picnic. The Picnic That Changed European History. DW World. Duh.